Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about the slider listener class, which is a way that we can take our values that we have coming from our sliders that we created in our last tutorial and be able to relay them to our plugin processor where we'll be able to use them to actually modify some DSP. So in this in this particular tutorial, we're not actually going to use it to uh, map to create the ADSR just yet. I'm just going to show you how to actually use the slider listener class to just actually relay the data across to the processor side from the editor side. So just a quick reminder before we get started, we have some merchandise for sale. Uh, right below this video via Teespring. So check out the various hoodies, t-shirts, uh, coffee mugs, if you want to drink coffee while you're coding uh, with an audio programmer coffee mug. We also have stickers. Uh, so check that out. That should be in the uh, information right below the video. Also, if you like videos like this, be sure to check out our Patreon on patreon.com forward slash the audio programmer. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so we're gonna start here on the editor side. So if you remember, the editor is the place where we're actually creating all of our UI elements. So we have our attack, decay, sustain, and release sliders here on the editor side. Now the question becomes, uh, when there's a change to one of these sliders, uh, how do we actually relay it over to the plugin processor side? So on the plugin processor side, we have our audio callback where we're actually doing our DSP processing. So how can we use that to actually relay the values from the sliders over to an ADSR object once we create it over on the plugin processor side. So the first thing that we need to do is we could, there are a couple ways that you can do this. So the two main ways are using what we're about to implement, which is called the slider listener class. Uh, uh, there's another way that's a little bit more complicated, but a little bit more robust is called the audio processor value tree state. And I have tutorials on that as well. Uh, if you check up on the top right, uh, I'll put a link to those tutorials so you can check those out if you want to go the more complex route. Uh, this is a great one for beginners uh, that are looking to just create kind of a prototype for uh, relaying these values. And it works just fine as far as I know. So, so here we go. So we'll just look for the slider listener. Uh, so this is the class here. So it's the slider listener class. And if we click in here, we can see at the top, it says it's an abstract class. So an abstract class means that we don't create an actual slider listener object. We're just going to inherit uh, this as a class in our editor. So the first thing that we need to do is we just need to inherit slider listener. So the way we can do that is we can just go here to our class. So we see that we have our hello sampler audio processor editor, and then we're inheriting already from audio processor editor from file drag and drop target. And now we will also inherit from this slider listener class. So now I'll just tab this over. Make sure you don't forget the comma there. Okay, very common mistake there, uh, or else it won't compile. Okay, so now that we have that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space. And what we will be able to see if I pull the API up here is that we have a actual function that we need to implement. Okay, so this is what's called a pure virtual function. We know it's pure virtual because we see this equals zero at the end of the function in the documentation. That means that this class will not actually uh, that this will not actually compile unless we actually implement this function. As you can see here, we got an error that says allocating an object of abstract class that says unimplemented pure virtual method slider value changed. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to actually do an implementation implementation of this. Okay, so we could just say here void slider value changed. And then it just takes a slider pointer 
as an argument and we can use this override keyword. So override just lets us know that, hey, this isn't some function that I just made up out of my head. This is actually overriding some sort of uh, function that we're, that is, uh, is written in one of the classes that we're inheriting from, okay? So, so that's why I'm using this override keyword. If you don't use override, uh, it'll, I believe it'll still compile, but you'll probably get a warning. So now we just need to actually implement this function. Okay, so we'll just do this down here at the bottom. So we do void and then the class that we're in is the hello sampler audio processor editor and then slider value changed and there we are okay so the reason that we have to do that is because we want this to be what's called a slider listener so we want so when we're saying that we're inheriting from the slider listener class is we're saying to the editor hey we want you to listen for any changes that the user is making in the UI, in their sliders, and then we want you to do something. And the reason that we have to implement slider value changed, okay, the reason why it's a pure virtual function is because we have to tell it what we want it to do when we hear a slider value actually change, right? So we have, uh, so what we need to do is we need to say, Okay, if the slider is that the user is changing is the attack slider, then we want it to do this. We, if it's the decay slider, we want it to do this other thing. So, so what we could do is we could start off by saying if, uh, and then we can say slider is equal to. Now this is a bit tricky because this takes a pointer. So, so the argument is a pointer, which means that we need to give it a memory location, which means we need to use the ampersand operator. So we can say attack slider. Now we want it to do something. And then we can say else if slider is equal to decay slider. And then we say else if slider is equal to sustain slider and then else if slider is equal to release slider okay so all we're saying is if the user is making changes in their in their slider we want to do something with that with those values okay so now if we go over to our plugin processor, right, we can see that at the moment we don't have a place. We don't have any sort of ASD, uh, ADSR object at the moment uh, where we can actually hold these values. What I'm going to do for now just to demonstrate this is I'm just going to make uh, four variables. I'm just going to call this attack and then I'm just going to initialize this to zero, float decay. And then sustain, and then release. Okay, so now we have those. And then what I could do is, let's see the best way to do this. Let's say that I create a function, let's say void uh, get ADSR value. Let's just call it that, right? And then I will implement this on the other side. So let's go over here. We will say void. And then we're on the processor side. And then what did I call it again? called it get ADSR value. And then let's just say, so we're going to do uh, a debug, which is the same as console out. And then what I'm going to say is, okay, let's do attack. 
and I'm just going to console out these values if they change. And then decay. Sustain. Release. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in. I'll put this in the process block for now. Okay, so this, this is just for demonstration purposes. No, so this isn't norm, something I would normally do, but uh, this is just to demonstrate that we're indeed uh, relaying the data from the editor over to the plugin processor. So now we have these, uh, we have these variables that we've created. We're going to be counseling them out over here. Uh, in this get ADSR value, we've called ADSR value repeatedly here in this process block. And now what we need to do is we need to think about how are we going to actually get this uh, value, get this value changed when the user makes a change in the editor. So luckily in the editor, we have this reference to our processor. Okay. So just to walk it through for people that are just starting out. So we have this class is called Hello Sampler Audio Processor. Now here, going back to the editor, we have Hello Sampler Audio Processor. So this is a member of this class, okay? But it is just a reference, okay? So a reference means that we aren't creating a, we aren't creating a processor object. All we're doing is we're saying, hey, we want to talk to this particular processor that we've already created, okay? So we're not creating one. We're not creating one. We're just uh, referencing it, okay? We're just talking about the one, the processor that's already been created, okay? So, um, so here we go. So what we could say is going in here, we could go processor, and then what I can do is since I'm in, since I have these variables attack, decay, sustain, and release, these are all public in my hello sampler audio processor. I can now access them. I can now access them using my processor reference. So I can say processor.attack is equal to, now all I want to do is when the slider value is changed, I just want to get the value of the slider, right? So I could say M attack slider get value. Okay. And then we want to do this for decay, sustain, and release. So we got processor decay is equal to M decay slider get value. Then sustain, sustain slider, get value, and then release. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear my dog. So now, so now this should work. So this should, this should all work. Okay. So I'm going to compile this. Hopefully that error goes away. Great. Build succeeded. So now we're opening up Ableton. And now down here in the console, we should see any changes that are happening to our to our sliders. So here we go. Got the hello. So now we have this uh, actually consoling out. And then now we can see that Nothing is actually changing. Okay, so what is happening here? Okay, this is a crucial step that I definitely miss all the time that uh, is crucial to make this work. And you can drive yourself kind of crazy uh, if you don't know what to do here. So if we go back out, okay, the other thing that we need to do 
is we need to add the editor as a listener for these sliders. So we got M attack slider, add listener, and then what we want to add is this editor that we're in now, right? So, uh, so then I just use the keyword this. This refers to hello, Pro hello sampler audio processor editor. Okay, so think of that as kind of our main window. So all I'm saying is, hey, ma hey main window, I want you to listen when uh, there are changes being made to this slider. And we can do this with all of the other ones as well. So we got MDK slider, add listener. Okay, this. And then sustain slider. and release slider. Yeah, if you forget to do this, you will be going around in circles forever, wondering what's happening and why you're not actually getting any values coming out. So, uh, so here we go. So now we're gonna open Ableton again. We're gonna open our plugin. And now when we make changes, we can see that the changes are actually reflecting in the console now. Okay, so there we go. And now we can see that we are relaying the changes in these sliders successfully over to the editor, to the uh, processor side rather. So that's it for this tutorial really. Just wanted to show you how the slider uh, listener class works. It's a great alternative if you want to set up something quick, a uh, great alternative to the audio processor value tree state class, which can be a little bit kind of finicky to, to set up. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, all of that business, and I will see you next time.